Okay, let's finish the last part here with counterexamples. So at the very beginning, we defined a counterexample as an example that shows a conjecture is false. So if you can come up with just one example that disproves the statement, then you have just proven the whole thing false. So there are often um, several counterexamples that would be valid. Find a counterexample to show that the conjecture is false. So here's the conjecture, all odd numbers are prime. So what we want to do when we do this counterexample is we still want to work with odd numbers, but we want to find examples that are not prime. So for example, here's what you would, here's what you would be looking for. Um, look for odd, I'll just put odds, um, that are not prime. So um, odd numbers that are not prime. So like one, three, five, seven, nine, um, you're searching for um, odd numbers that are not prime. Um, let's see, there's a lot of examples. First one that comes to mind, um, three. Three is not prime, 15 is not prime, that type of thing. So I'm gonna just say 15, and I might even show that, you know, one times 15, three times five, uh, that sort of supports that. So you do not want to completely change the subject. The subject is about odd numbers. So I would not want to look for even numbers that are prime. I'm keeping the beginning odd, but I'm swapping out a new conclusion. So my conjecture that all odd numbers are prime is false because I have found an odd number that is not prime. Okay, uh, number nine. And if you wanna pause and try to finish the other two, that'd be fine. So I'll just kind of work through them slowly and you can pause and work ahead if you'd like. Conjecture, the difference of two positive numbers is always positive. So I'm looking for the difference, so you're thinking subtraction, of two positive numbers. Um, let me read that again. The difference of two positive numbers is always positive. So I'm looking for the difference of two positive numbers that's negative. So, two minus four, let's say two and four are my numbers. So if I set it up as two minus four, I get a negative two. Well, negative two is not positive. So actually, this whole thing is my counterexample, not just the negative two. So on the first one, I was just coming up with an odd number that wasn't prime. On this one, I need to show that the difference of two positive numbers is not positive, it'll be negative. So the whole thing is our um, counter example. Okay, last one. The value of x squared is always greater than the value of x. So what this is saying is the value of a number, so let's take a number. And if you take a number and you square it, that value is always bigger than your original number. That's what this is saying, okay? So, Let's just pick, I don't know, let's start out with one. Let's say if x equals one. So the conjecture says if I take one and I square it, it's greater than the original number of one. So if I take one and I square it, the conjecture said that it's greater than one because I'm saying x is one. Well, when I square one, it's not greater than one, it's equal. So actually I just found a counter example right here. So my conjecture is that the value of x squared is always greater than the value of x. So I'm gonna say, well, no, my counterexample is x equals one. Um, zero would also be a valid counterexample. Um, let me give you a few examples that are not counterexamples that prove it true. So let's say, let's say x is two. So the value of x squared, two squared, the conjecture is saying it's always greater than the original number. Well, that's four, four is greater than two. Okay, so that's true. So that's not a counterexample. I'm just gonna X through that here. So if you very likely, oftentimes, you're going to come up with examples that prove it true on the two, first, second, or third, or fourth try, time you try it. So um, it's not very common that you come up with one right away, but it's common that you come up with one that proves it true. So if you do that, just, just keep trying examples. You'll eventually find one, for the most part, that will show it to be false. 
Okay, that wraps up inductive reasoning today.